<laughs> hey Chris, what keeps you motivated? Being an Art Center student, there's so much things on our plate. What keeps you inspired and motivated to keep on going and find new ideas? What keeps me motivated after doing this for 20 years? One of the things that motivates me very much, and I get great pleasure in, in this, is that I love to learn. Because every time I learn something new, I feel like I've grown a little bit. And my wife, she will walk by and look at me do something, and it's like midnight, and she'll shake her head like, what are you doing? I'm gonna go to bed, right? And he said, hold on, I need to finish this tutorial, because I want to learn how to do this one thing, and the deadline's imminent, it's like tomorrow morning. But I'd rather take the time to sit there to learn to do it the right way, the shortest way, versus doing it the way I knew how to do it, because that's the easy way. And I believe that people who have interned for me, the people who have worked for me, will testify to that fact, because I get on everybody's case. So I sit down next to a designer, and they're working, and they get all really tense, and they start working. And I'm not literally doing it, but it feels like I'm counting clicks on how long it takes you to do something. Then I'll just grimace a little bit, and I'll say, you know, failed me for the last time. It's really command option J24. That's really the answer that you're looking for. But I see you dragging and dragging. So you're a young person now. All those moves you make don't seem like significant amounts of time to you right now. But 40 years later, you could have gone on vacation for three weeks in the time that it took you to do that same repetitive task. That's why I find myself when I'm doing something more than once or struggling through something, I'd rather automate it via an action look it up, maybe there's a different way. And now this is a great thing called Google. You type in what you want, and within four or five clicks, if you learn how to ask the right question, you'll have the answer. That's why I'm on that. I go to conferences, I, I seek out teachers and coaches to, to share new things with me because I want to grow. And that's what makes me feel alive. There's only once in my life that I felt burnt out, that I feel like I have nothing left to give. And that was about five years in five to six years in, and it's typically what's gonna to happen to you. So mark your calendar, set the date. If you graduate this year in 2021, you're gonna feel a burnout. And you just write, Chris told me I'm gonna be burnt out here. It's usually about five years out because everything that you love about design, the creativity, the self-expression, the autonomy that you got from being in school will have been beaten out of you by that time. But you're defining your success in a different way than I did or I do. You're defining about how much of my design aesthetic can I impose on people. And I use the word impose, that's a carefully chosen word. Because that's really what you're doing. And so when people don't like your taste, your choices and fonts and colors and textures, you feel like you've been injured as a soul, as an artist. But really what you're doing is you're forcing your subjective decisions, your taste level onto other people. Some people like purple, some people like gold, but it's not for everybody. And if you love gold and you try to jam that down everybody's throat, that's what's gonna happen. And so after a while you feel like, oh, I'm just a robot, I'm just doing things for people, and I don't care about them anymore. So all my young designers who graduate, big eyes, they wanna set the world on fire, gonna do all these things, they do stuff, and I'm like, I can't read that. How's that solution that you came up with related to the brief? How's that related to everything else we've designed before? Oh, you just wanna do it your way. We asked for a flat graphic, you did dark and cinematic. Why are you doing that? Oh, because that's what you love. So it has no relationship to the problem. And that's where you're gonna feel the burnout. Because you feel like your creative soul is being sucked out from you. Go ahead. I was, I was looking at her work too because she was asking me for advice and the client had horrible taste and my roommate was trying to say like, oh, this is better, like I go to school so I know what to do. But in that case, do you just go with the client and just accept like, oh, I'm gonna do this like horrible, like weird job or do you just drop the client? Like, I can't work with you anymore. Our, we have totally different visions. So you, you asked this question about taste and, and people having bad taste. Well, who's the, the king that said that you have the champion of the good taste and we certify you as having the best taste? Even amongst designers, we can argue with each other, highly educated in the graphic arts, right? That we can say, well, your taste is not good and my taste is good. And so it's, wait, what is that? This, it's just purely subjective. Let's understand something. When you agree to do something for somebody, you make either an implied or an ex explicit exchange in value. What's your exchange? Your exchange is I'm gonna give you a really creative product that's gonna solve your problem, and their exchange is I'm gonna give you money. 
Well, are they giving you money for you to make your art? Are they giving you money to solve their problem? So that's the first part. So we need to understand that we're in a business and it's a transaction. Now, if the idea of receiving money for your art feels cheap to you and feels crass, go be a fine artist. That's totally okay. But we're in a commercial art exchange and it's a service just like anything else. Imagine a wedding dress maker that you've ordered that makes you the dress that you don't want. Imagine the hairstylist that gives you the hairstyle that you don't want. But they're like, you know what, this is the hotness. That would make you feel really upset. So change that mentality first. Now, when it comes to now where it's just destroying every fabric of who you are and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Sure, own up and say, you know what? I don't think you're the right client for me. I'm going to refund your money. I'm sorry. I'll refer some other designers. I think I know who can help you and I'm not the person. But don't take the money, hate them and hate the process in the whole way. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that you need to do. What you need to do is you need to define an objective measure of success as opposed to a subjective measure. Subjective measure is like, is it good? Is it cool? Is it clean? All these kinds of things, right? Those are very subjective because one person's definition of that is different than the others, okay? So what's an objective measure? Well, it needs to be delivered on this th time. Okay, we understand that. And it can't be, you can't spend more than $3,000 to print it, okay? It needs to communicate that it's a two for one or a BOGO, buy one, get one. And this is who we're speaking to. Oh, we're speaking to expectant mothers. So those are much more objective. And now what you need to do is solve that problem and measure it against that. So if you come in with a design that's like urban and hip hop, we know you've missed the mark. So what we need to do as creatives is to learn how to define an objective business measure, a marketing goal with the client, not, not for them, with them. So that remember we're diagnosing the problem again now. So when we get into diagnosing the problem as opposed to selling parts and services, we change the dynamic from being an order taker to at least one of an equal, if not an expert. That's the goal. You need to become an expert. So it requires a different skill set altogether. And here's where I'm going to recommend a book for you guys, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll post it right here. It's called The Win Without Pitching Manifesto. It's written by Blair Enns. And you just need to read it. It's a very short book. It's a little black book. It's like 27 bucks. You can order it. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. The title is designed to draw you in. Like, oh, I have to never pitch again? This is great. It's really not about that. You're going to learn to understand that what you do, if you do it carefully, you will be seen as an expert. And that's what we want to do. One for which there's no replacement for, or one that people will pay huge sums of money to get the advice of or the services of. So there's a lot of concepts. It's written kind of like a Bible. Like, thou shall not do X. Thou shall not pitch. Thou shall not... Here's one of, one of his uh, commandments, I think, because it's called the manifesto. Thou shalt not prescribe a solution prior to diagnosing the problem. So every time somebody says, I need this, you're like, I'm ready. You start, you've screwed up already. If you guys uh, want my book list, I post and I'm very active in the social media space. If you go on Facebook, if you look up Chris Doe, business designer, I have a page that is just about business ideas. So I say, these are three books you need to buy. And there are links and there's all the information. It, I'm very easy to find in terms of all these things, okay? What resources do I use to stay up to date with industry? If we have this discussion about learning from people who are actually not in the field, not in that knife fight, the dog eat dog kind of world that I told you about, they're gonna give you information that worked for, for them 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Boy, have a lot of things changed in that time span, okay? Just look around, go look up uh, motion design firms, look at how many of them are closing, how many of them are downsizing, how many of them are doing something different today. Look at how many commercials you see. So what, one thing that you do is you need to be a, you need to be more attentive to what's going on and you have to be curious about the world. Now, like my morning, as soon as my eyes open up, I reach for my phone. I'm going through a, checking through all my social media channels to see what conversations have been started. But then I'm into uh, CNET, CNN. I'm into my photography blogs because I want to stay informed. I want to know what's going on. And then when I'm driving to work, I'm listening to uh, NPR. And then when I go back home, I'm watching TED Talks. That's how I stay informed. I am no longer um, looking at sites to like learn about design tricks or what's going on because I've learned that stuff already. And actually learning more of that isn't going to really help me. Because of the future is about designers is to learn more about business principles. You're not going to learn from any design, motion, graphics, illustration, blogs. 
I'm gonna go solve the business problem and that's how I'm gonna create value for myself. And then I will hire people who are specialists in what they do. But if I'm on, and I have probably an addiction to Pinterest, I probably pin like uh, 20 or 30,000 images myself. And what I do then is I take design and I put into buckets, things that I like, not because I wanna be inspired by it, because when I'm talking to a client and they say, we like that kind of punk rock look, I have a bucket and I can put that punk rock punk rock bucket together and show it to them. When you say punk rock, this is what it looks like to me. Are we talking about the same thing? So I show them back to them. So what I wanna do is I wanna think more, I wanna diagnose the problem, and I want to get alignment. Like, are we talking about the same thing before I actually do any real creative work? Is this the dress you're talking about, Joyce? Is that the hairstyle? Like, you, you talked about this. I wanna show it to you. But while I was looking for the hairstyle, I found two more that are kind of like it, but a little bit different. So it, it falls outside the spectrum of what you might have said to me. And sometimes the client's like, yeah, you're right. That's, I, you know, that's really good. Let's go down that direction, great. And then I make sure again, you know, we keep taking, uh, we're peeling back the layers before we actually do any real work. Music